The last movie I watched in 2023 was Rebel Moon. I spent all year eagerly awaiting this movie, and that's because of the hype and speculation that was generated for it. The expectation was that Zack Snyder was going to make his own version of Star Wars, a new space opera that hopefully does some new things, or at least provides a better experience compared to what we have received from Disney over the past couple of years, specifically with Star Wars. And it ended up being an average movie. A lot of people disliked it. I actually enjoyed the movie, but I was disappointed that the movie had a stronger start than finish. I actually found some things that I wish Star Wars would add to their movies, actually. But if someone were to ask me if Rebel Moon takes the space opera genre to the next level, I'd say no. Let's talk about Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire. Zack Snyder's film takes place in a fictional galaxy in which the mother world rules and its military, the Imperium, maintains order and obedience. The movie starts with the military threatening the moon of Velt, which is home to a farming colony. Korra, a former Imperium soldier, decides to leave Velt in order to recruit warriors across the galaxy to form an army to stand up to the Imperium before they come back to take most of the harvest from the colony. The movie's villain, Atticus Noble, is the admiral for the army that is threatening Velt. While awaiting the harvest of the crops, he goes on the hunt, attempting to destroy the rebels that are causing problems for the mother world. I'm not going to summarize each part of this movie, and it's not because I don't want to, it's because there's not much to summarize. Seriously, the movie starts on Velt, and once shit hits the fan, Korra finds Charlie Hunnam's character Kai, which is Rebel Moon's version of Han Solo. Korra and Kai then go off to recruit a few people to join the cause. That's two of the three main parts of this movie. The third and final part is Kai's betrayal of the newly formed heroes, and the heroes eventually win by defeating Noble and escaping capture. And I don't mean to come off like I'm trying to half-ass this or anything, but there's really not much of a story to break down. But I will say, the first half of the movie is pretty interesting. It was interesting to learn about Korra and understand why she's on the run from the Imperium. The pacing was nice too, it didn't take long for things to get going, and once Noble and the army visited, things were set into motion. We got our first bit of fighting right after when Korra was saving a fellow colonist who was about to be taken advantage of by the soldiers who were left to watch over the town. And let's talk about the fight scenes in this movie. I only have one issue. There were multiple times where we would go into these slow-mo scenes for some reason, and it just felt forced. It happened at times where I felt it wasn't needed, and I love hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes, especially in shows like Daredevil, because it's fast-paced and creative. The characters were using, you know, whatever they had in the environment that surrounded them, and there was a little bit of that creativity in this first fight in the farm, but the slow-mo stuff is just not needed. It's kind of cliche and cringy to see the epic action slow-mo scenes of your sliding and aiming your gun and shooting enemies. It's just, whatever effect they were going for, it, it missed the mark in my opinion. I was actually surprised to read and hear about all the criticism of Korra. People didn't understand why she was so powerful and able to kick so much ass, especially at the beginning of the movie. And people claimed that she supposedly avoided death on numerous occasions where she shouldn't have. And that just makes me laugh because I love how people today get so upset with the protagonist of any show or movie. Like, why are we so shocked to see the hero survive and overcome incredible odds? Of course, things need to make logical sense to a point, and in my opinion, they do in Rebel Moon, at least in regards to Korra. Zack Snyder actually developed Korra in a good way. We learned about her past in flashbacks, and in detail, so we know all about her background, her origin, and we see proof as to why she's this badass warrior. This is what J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson needed to do with Rey in the sequel trilogy, not just conveniently write in her powers and origin story. I'm convinced that Korra is a badass because of the way they showed us her past, and she actually proved it too. I actually wish Star Wars would show more flashbacks. We've seen it in Disney Plus shows recently, but future movies should also look to feature more of this. I'm tired of waiting three movies to learn the true origin of a character, and let's actually see what happened in the past so we could better understand where we are now and why we are in this specific moment of time. It's also nice to see text on the screen that gives you the name of a planet or indicates the time period you're in. I do appreciate knowing where I am and what is happening, especially in a movie like this where we are just thrown into a situation and we just watch it develop with little context about the world this story is set up in. 
It's amazing that the runtime for this movie is 2 hours and 14 minutes. It felt like a 90 minute experience for me. The movie felt rushed because it was all about assembling the heroes. That's it. I know there's a part 2 coming, but how come we didn't get a little adventure with the new crew? People claim Zack Snyder took ideas from a bunch of movies and threw them all together. Movies such as Blade Runner, The Matrix, Seven Samurai, Dark City, Conan the Barbarian, Excalibur, and of course Star Wars. Now, I'll admit I have not seen every one of these movies I just mentioned, but it is disappointing to see that all these ideas and themes didn't make the movie much better. One thing that always bothered me about Star Wars is the fact that the group of heroes were hardly together. Like, Luke was always separated from Leia and Han. Obi-Wan and Anakin were hardly together in the prequels. And then, also in the sequels, it featured Rey being away from Finn and Poe most of the time. Rebel Moon features an even larger group of people, and yet the only time we see them doing something together is at the end during the final battle as they escape capture. There's hardly any interaction seen between them, there's no comic relief that could break the tension or show the bonds growing between anyone, they just cut right to the chase and it eliminates any chance for some fun. The second half of the movie is completely different from the first half because on Velt we actually saw people talking, arguing, celebrating, and fighting together. Rebel Moon also lacks sci-fi elements. There's a limited number of robots, aliens, and creatures. The villain and his army all seem to be humans. There's those creepy looking religious guys in robes and masks that they do look cool, but ultimately they just stand around. Nobody has powers and the weapons are your typical laser guns and swords. Now, the lightsaber-like swords are lame as hell because they're supposedly regular swords that can be turned on in the laser swords during combat, but then they could still be used as regular, bland, practical weapons. Noble has a cool golden scepter that he uses to bash in the heads of a few people in this movie. And speaking of him, they resurrect him from the dead which eliminates any chance of a bigger and badder villain for Korra and company to deal with in part 2. No strong, super mutant, alien, life force thing, nothing like that. Again, it's it's a space opera, it's, it's a sci-fi movie, and those elements, they're just not there. Now, I do want to shed some positivity on the movie, though, because there are things I enjoyed. I really appreciated the cast and the characters. Like with Star Wars, the special effects, sound design, and cinematography were all top-notch. And I'll mention it again, I like the way they explained Korra's backstory, and I do like the other people Korra recruits. General Titus, Tarak, the topless nobleman, Nemesis, the cyborg swordmaster, and Darian Bloodaxe, the freedom fighter. They're all unique in their own ways just by looking at them. I just wish the movie would have given them more time to flesh out their personalities and just do more in general. The movie did have some memorable moments. There were quite a few scenes where we saw the brutality of Noble. I liked all the flashback scenes because they provided the context we needed for characters and the world, at least to a point. Korra's first fight in the barn, in my opinion, was awesome, besides the slow-mo stuff. I also enjoyed the bar fight, which included that horny guy that basically started it. And we did get some Star Wars-esque weirdness in that scene where the tentacle alien thing was chilling in the same room as Noble and he's got those tentacles on him. Perhaps he was getting pleasured in some weird way, who knows? Again, the cinematography was great. There were many beautiful shots throughout this entire movie. And I have a feeling Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver, will be a lot better. We will see more of these characters, and we'll probably learn more about the bad guys, hopefully. And I hope the fight scenes get better, though I'm kind of worried, because if they're going to be fighting at the farming village on Velt, I, how is that, that place is going to get easily destroyed by, you know, a whole army invading. But we'll see what happens. I'm sure there's going to be more to the movie, at least based off of what I've seen in the trailer for Part 2. And since they appear to be getting ready for the final confrontation, I would assume there's not much to rush in the second part, but who knows. Anyways, I enjoyed the movie enough to be looking forward to part 2 when it comes out in a few months. So I will give this movie a 7 out of 10, I probably liked it way more than most. It had enjoyable moments and there's a decent amount of criticism that I actually disagree with. It's a shame a good story and group of characters is getting wasted by the fast-paced writing which was very evident, especially during the second half of this movie. Well, what did you think of Rebel Moon Part 1? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Feel free to check out more content on the channel and consider subscribing if you're new here. You can also find my content on podcasting platforms. Just Google Analyze This Podcast. I'm also on X and TikTok, X at Analyze This underscore YT and TikTok at Analyze This 54 underscore YT. Thanks again and take care.